Okay, you want to take the lid off? So the project began with some ceramics that I was producing over the last few years and asked Daniel if he would be willing to collaborate with me on the boxes that would contain these ceramics. Uh, what has sort of come out of the collaboration is that neither the ceramic nor the box is the subject of the piece, but is the conversation between the piece. I guess with each pair of each bot and each box was sort of a, a different conversation, but they all sort of were in talking about the same kind of theme, the same idea. And they sort of happened differently. Each sort of pair had a little bit different process and sometimes the pot would be first and then I would bring materials and woodworking ideas to Stephen and we would talk about it. And in other cases, I would have an idea for a, a type of wood that I, you know, was excited about and I would bring it to Stephen and he would play off of that. Uh, yeah, a, <laughs> I think that what happens, I guess, with the, the box that was for the pot that got broken during the firing, it was interesting that the idea morphed based on what had happened to the pot. And so the box ended up being burned and then presented a whole other series of problems. In furniture, I think a lot of the time you want to work out all those little details because at the, at the very end, if you're, you, you want to join two pieces that you haven't figured out how it's going to work, it, it ends up looking like an afterthought or and so there's, there's a lot of planning that goes into it and there's this sort of linear process and it was really amazing to work with Stephen and to be more in dialogue with the piece itself, I guess, and uh, sort of be open to the opportunities that arose from the process. For example, the burnt box, I put this beautiful box together and I started torching it and it just ripped itself apart, you know, as the wood expanded and twisted and like Stephen says, it uh, created this problem that we then had to solve, but it was sort of in relation to the kintsugi that was done to the, uh, to the pot. So it was pulled back together and held together with these uh, brass rings. I've been working with ceramics for about 10 years now and wanted to do something that, you know, brought that aspect of my work into what people know me for, which is paintings and drawings. So it was the kind of call and response to produce the show. So at the pots were there. I had, you know, started thinking about moon jars a few years back. And it was the beauty of the simplicity of the form that I was attracted to. So I just started making these moon jars and thought, oh, what would go with them? And I mean, the most obvious thing for me was, you know, the night sky, because these vessels were representative of celestial bodies. So in some ways they're orbiting around the paintings and that is what I wanted to kind of elaborate on. And the paintings have sort of progressed and one thing leads to another. So they start out simply enough with 
the first painting, Torrens Barrens, and it's of the night sky over the Torrens Barrens Dark Sky Preserve in Muskoka, and it's of the Milky Way. And then I sort of zoom in on that and think about, you know, what's going on uh, in how we look at these pictures of the night sky and how we receive them. A lot of them are digitized, so what I've done is rendered them in the way that that information is encoded when the photographs are being taken. I had been working in mosaic and it seemed like a logical way of representing these things. Oftentimes I'm interested in the relationship between the subject and the content of the, the piece. and. So I was looking at digitized images and thinking, okay, I'm making pictures of digitized images, so let's foreground that when I'm making them. Art is always engaged with these kind of ephemeral ideas and the the nature of the universe or the night sky is this ephemeral thing. It's not tangible, but to render it in colored mud is to kind of render it in a tangible means. And likewise with the pots, it's taking this kind of raw matter, this mud, and forming it into something that is more than the sum of its parts. building the box, we would have these ideas and we'd talk about techniques and how to build it and what it should look like. And we would discuss the relation at that point, but then to actually see them together and see them with the paintings in the gallery space and see everything, you would notice different things. They would speak with each other or relate with each other in a um, really amazing way. Each mark on the surface of the paintings is almost like a grain of sand in an hourglass. It registers the amount of time of its manufacture. When you think about uh, night skies as well, too, the, the light of each one of those stars that is represented comes from a different time. One of the moment could be 10 million years ago and another star could be, you know, 20 million light years old, um, but somehow they've arrived here in our present. There are representations of shooting stars too, and that's like this, the briefest of moments in relationship to cosmic time. And, you know, oftentimes we miss them. I mean, our friends could be standing beside us when a shooting star happens and they're going, look, look, and by the time you've looked, it's gone. So these different ideas of, of time are um, in play for me when I'm thinking about this particular body of work.